Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much for joining me here. Happy Monday to you. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Let's take a look here at AVAX, double check a few things. It's on the significant pullback because Bitcoin raked down from 99K uh, to 95,000 and lower, right? So we gotta recognize that is happening. So be very careful just buying the dip right now. Um, while it's worked fairly well in the recent past, uh, this has a different feel to it, okay? So again, um, just really odd the way the price action is moving here. I uh, pretty much expected though, because we did short Bitcoin at uh, what, 90, basically 98,000, just secured profits at about 94,850 for a good 26%, um, you know, for a short there from Saturday. So if you saw my analysis on Saturday for Bitcoin, you'll know kind of where my head is at. Uh, same thing with Cartesi too, nice little 90% long there for that guy. Um, anyways, I'm mentioning that and pointing that out because you need to recognize that the the what is it the, the proof is in the pudding or no the uh the drawings are on the wall i don't know what the analogy is but we've been expecting bitcoin to retrace for a little while and it doesn't it, it makes perfect sense so how that correlates to avax is obviously avax is pulling back pretty hard in the last 12 hours after bitcoin opened up poorly prior to that it's done very well and it could still do well again don't get wrong it's not like it's out of the race but the truth is we're in a situation right now where we got to kind of we got to respect Bitcoin. We got to wait for Bitcoin to find us bottom before you just blindly take along. That's generally what you should do. That's best practice. Take a look here, though. On the left hand side, we can see the last seven days of liquidation longs or shorts, rather. I mean, they're both in, they're in both direction, but there's a lot more longs in play right now. Uh, we can see 30, 38 to thirty nine dollars as a rough estimate, more so just thirty eight dollars even. That's just below the local low. We got high leverage longs that are potentially going to get destroyed. So again, don't be another statistic, folks. Try not to be a high leverage trader. Um, you can use it on occasion for a, for a good time, for fun. But if you're literally trying to trade professionally with high leverage, you're doing it way wrong, dude. There's a, the success rate is so stinking low that the higher you go with leverage, the, the more ridiculous it becomes. It's basically, it's the it's an exchange's best best case scenario, but it's a worst case scenario for us. And why people keep doing it, I don't know. Probably because there's a lot of other high leverage idiots out there promoting the fact that it's it's what crypto is all about. Truth is, it's not, and that's bad advice. Good advice is low leverage, low position sizing, and making sure that you're trading according to your risk tolerance. And if your risk tolerance is higher higher leverage, and you're okay with getting liquidated every so often, then that's a different story. But you should never ever get liquidated. It's just, it shouldn't be a thing. It's just unreal how normal that is become in the market. Anyways, we can see open interest here. Let's double check. Let's uh, see what the heavier concentrations are. We can recognize that we are in a position right now where most people are heavy at about $42.35. So not to say that they can't, you know, still prevail by holding on. But uh, at this point, you know, that's our local point of control for the most part. I think that's at $42, $43 mark. So knowing that, taken along into that resistance doesn't make a ton of sense, okay? So again, we zoom in here, you'll see that people have the most amount of volume right in this area here, okay? And that's the resistance for us while we're below it, generally kind of how it's construed. Anyways, just, just some food for thought there. Let's take a look at the weekly work away down since today is Monday and we got a weekly closure that occurred. Um, so far, this doji candle's looking pretty bad, but again, it's still very early. We're six days, we got six days left. Um, so don't read into that. What we want to read into is being above every single moving average. There's a lot of confluence at $34. So just so you know, the price doesn't end up pulling back. We lose 40. We got a decent amount of support in that range. So I'd be very interested in a long uh, in that area. Now, I'm just going to set an alert here loosely. I don't think we're going to hit that. I'm just throwing it out there. But that would be a great consideration. Okay. Now I'm going to remove some previous alerts here and double check. We're over 50 in the RSI under 70 money flow next is above the price action stochastic swinging up still it's trying to diverge but hasn't yet until it's fully diverges we have no reason to be concerned we're in pretty good shape here i would say nine out of ten reasons why uh avax should continue higher in the overall sense it doesn't mean it can't still pull back and we're going to talk about areas of retracement we'll take a look here Daily time frame, we're right there at 70 in the RSI. So you should have secured profits on a log by now. That's basically what that's telling us here. Again, that's just kind of a conservative approach. You don't have to do that, but uh, when the price goes above 70 in the RSI, generally when it pulls back to that level, you want to consider securing profits so that way you have, you know, you can walk away in the green. Okay, so again, everyone has different strategies, but that's uh, kind of a conservative approach. We can see stochastic swinging down again. So we're kind of seeing some choppy behavior here now that we've broken that 40K range. Sorry, for $40 range, not $40,000. <laughs> uh, having said that, though, Bitcoin is pulling back. We'll look at the correlation here shortly. And as Bitcoin pulls back, we're seeing the same thing from AVAX here. So um, 
you know, with our FIB levels here, I'm going to update those. I'm going to post that on our playout chart uh, here on Twitter, Telegram, and Discord. So if you're not familiar, I do post, you know, regular playout charts here, if you will. Um, so sometimes I prefer to take the time to analyze the charts than I do just kind of updating the charts. Uh, I'll do that after. Anyways, the whole point of me mentioning that is we got some new FIB levels to focus on. I'm not going to worry about that just yet because today's daily candlestick hasn't closed. But what we're looking at here, we're over 50 on the RSI, generally positive sign. So we got to give that a chance to hold. So if AVAX comes down to 40, $41, it may be a good consideration for long. However, money flow index is now below the RSI, generally construed as a bearish sign. We don't like that. We're also breaking below the 20 day SMA. And usually, and even though hindsight's 2020, we see this here, it wasn't a good idea. Uh, same thing holds true. A safer, conservative, realistic trader is not going to take a long in the blind into a 20 day SMA break. You want to wait for the price to be back up above it before you do. Okay. And this isn't a support or resistance level. People seem to misinterpret that. SMAs are simply just letting you know where the trend is. Right now, we're below that short-term trend, implying that we're breaking bearish. We haven't fully broken yet, but we're on our way. See, we're getting close to 50 on the RSI. Anything underneath this is more likely to go down lower. So Kassik RSI is breaking down. We can see MACD is also diverging. So there's more reasons here why we should experience further downside than upside at this exact moment. That'll probably change by the time you watch this video, folks. But Again, if nothing else, if I could at least impart onto you some best practice so you can maybe make a better decision moving forward, that's the whole point of this, right? These, are, these analysis are never guaranteed, uh, but again, larger statistical probability because we follow the, the right system and you, you got to work within what's given to you. So we take a look here. Each mogul cloud is confirming we technically have a small window of opportunity left open here. This is not telling us to take along, but what it is telling us is that we're entering a support zone uh, as well as a conversion line breaking below the baseline, if that were to happen, that would let us know we've lost momentum to the upside. Lagging span is almost within the price action, so there's like, there's, <laughs> there's two out of three reasons not to take a long here, basically letting us know that window of opportunity for a long position is closing, okay? Again, all the more reason why you should have secured profits on a long from the low to mid 30s, okay? Uh, not saying it will, won't come back down there, and if you're in a spot bag position, don't even worry about this. That's a different story altogether. I think big picture for AVAX is still quite substantial. But right now, for the next week, holiday week coming up here, a lot of profits are going to be taken. It's very, very common to see sell-offs leading into holidays. Okay, and again, it's a lot of times it's because market makers don't want to hold those, uh, you know, hold those profitable trades open throughout the entire weekend. So. Keep in mind, we got some funky stuff coming up here, but the truth is right now we're in this weird transition where it doesn't make a ton of sense to long, even though you're statistically more likely to find success going up than down with AVAX. We're starting to see some of those shifts in momentum happening. More specifically, we're seeing that with Bitcoin. And if we look at the correlation between AVAX and Bitcoin right now, AVAX is bleeding out pretty concurrent with Bitcoin. Uh, while it's not a monumental significant drops, we're starting to see this, this volume dissipate and that, that's changing things, okay? So while I'm still on the same page here of the price going up in the overall sense, it would make a little more sense to see a bit further of a correction before that happens. I think we're gonna see the 93 to 95K range for Bitcoin. We've already tested that 95K range. In fact, with our profits here from our short 26%, we went from 98 to 94.8, okay? So we hit most of our targets there. Again, Cartesi long, that's a different story altogether, but, um, I like to mention that and kind of just show you those things because it's it's important you recognize that you know the market isn't always up, <laughs> okay? And um, right now we're in this weird transition where hypothetically you could have some sec success uh, taking longs. You're more likely to find success with this coin right now taking along. It's still it's still a high risk, okay? So why not wait for things to stabilize and get in when when it's the the, the trend is truly established, okay? We're almost breaking bearish, and I don't like to trade into that. That's just me personally. I hope that's different for you, or perhaps it is different for you. You find success in other ways. That's awesome. Either way, you can find success by using the world's best exchanges, in my personal opinion, but BitUnix has treated our community very well. We have almost 1,000 members using this, uh, this exchange, $60,000 prize pool. They're Again, as we get more members, the more benefits come on to you. Uh, top 20 traders get uh, to walk away with um, 60K in prize pool money. So awesome stuff. Be sure to check that out. Link down below. Uh, Cryptocash.tech if you want to join our Trading Academy community and signals group. Got a lot of new members coming over. It's awesome. Super, super awesome. Anyways, uh, playout charts are available here for you if you want them. Cryptocash.tech. Everything's linked down below. Join us. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good rest of your day. Be safe out there. We'll see you.